नमस्ते जी एंड हैप्पी जन्माष्टमी द टीचिंग्स फ्रॉम गीता आर इटर्नल एंड टाइम टेस्टेड दे इंस्पायर अस इन सम फैशन अनफॉर्चुनेटली इंस्पिरेशन हावर लॉफ्टी टू नॉट मूव अस टू द नेक्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ एक्चुअलाइजिंग ट्रूथ वन इज सीकिंग फॉर We are always being told by our teachers and preachers of high rank and reputations that the best thing to arrive at is sthita pragya no doubt also to understand that man should never consider himself to be actual doer of things okay would you be happy simply reading the menu from five star hotel when you're hungry we read witnessing bhava or sthita pragya state or a balanced state or you know all those lofty states how are we to arrive at them our observation says that mere reading or hearing of it is of no avail unless we take up the means to achieve all those states in a very practical way we are always in the dark about those means which are necessary for the purpose nowhere can the slightest hint to that effect be traced out in all their discourses the result is that those who are listening are wrongly led to this conclusion that only the frequent repetition like mantras verses after verses should be enough things like i am not the doer or i am brahmam or brahmasmi is it all enough just reciting it is detrimental in fact to remain under illusion of having merely done our part of recitation one must adopt right means to arrive at right results earning the fruits of our practice like sthita pragya state of mind or having a condition like that of a lotus leaf in a dirty pond of water that remains unaffected or becoming a witness or joyously embracing sarnagati or performing niskam karma or desireless state will recitation such as i am brahmam or i am merely a witness actually give birth to such states think over it if that was so easy then by now all reciters and listeners would have attained what lord krishna is hinting at in many different ways i would like to share with you all a great revelation a mercy of my beloved master Pujya Sri Babuji Maharaj please pay close attention let us visit the mahabharat scene when the war was just about to begin arjun is despondent and decides not to fight now consider how much time lord krishna could have possibly required for speaking out the total text of gita as we find it today the armies were standing face to face on the battlefield and the war trumpets were sounding loud announcing the zero hour for that ultimate action how much time was there at the disposal of lord krishna to bring arjun back to proper course getting him ready to fight the war by preaching sermons to him think over it the recitation of 18 chapters packed with 700 shlokas requires at least few hours how could that be possible at that critical moment evidently he could not have taken more than a few minutes for it the fact is that lord krishna actually transmitted to arjun 
within few minutes all those mental states necessary for the purpose at that very moment really they were the very conditions which a spiritual seeker passes through during the course of spiritual journey the process brought arjuna instantly to a higher state of a feeling of spiritual consciousness and purged out the feeling of undue attachment from his heart this can as well be possible today if a personality of that caliber is there but as it is too commonly witnessed people here they recite gita for the whole life without taking in the least effect thereof the essence of gita never touches their heart how many has so far turned around like arjuna in spite of hearing the gita for years together lord krishna transmitted the knowledge to arjun as witnessed by sage vyasa who transcribed the same in sloka format this is important to understand that whatever transpired between lord krishna and arjun unspoken words which were transmitted they were transcribed in sloka format later on by sage vyasa this heart to heart transmission from the heart of the lord to arjun was witnessed by sage vyasa who carefully transcribed those emotions and conditions in slokas that became what we read today as gita the actually recited verses were only seven the seven gems were imparted to arjun through seven verses the rest were added by many sages over the passage of time besides what sage vyasa transcribed the heart to heart conversation that was between lord and arjun heart to heart dialogue was also no less important perhaps more important than those seven verbal communicated verses i like to with lot of reverence to the lord to my beloved babuji maharaj heart flowing in gratefulness i like to share with you all those seven gems the seven verses one of them is from chapter number 2 verses 55 that says prajhati yada kaman sarvan parth manogatan atmani eva atmana tusht स्थित प्रज्ञा तदा उच्यते ओ पार्थ वन हू हैविंग रिनाउंस ऑल डिजायर्स बॉर्न ऑफ द माइंड वन हू इज कंटेंट इन द सेल्फ एंड बाय द सेल्फ इट सेड टू बी वन हुज इन साइट इज स्टेडी स्थित प्रज्ञा चैप्टर टू verse 62 jayata visayan punsa sangate sup jayate sadgat sanjayate kama kamat krodha abhijayate while contemplating on the pleasures of the senses one is attracted to them from attraction arises desire and from desire arises anger next one also from the same chapter verse 63 krodhat bhavati samoha samohat smriti vibhrama smriti ansad buddhi nasha buddhi nasat pranashyati anger leads to confusion or delusion of mind which results in loss of memory when the memory is lost the intellect is lost destroyed and ruin of intellect 
leads man to destruction. Next was also from the same chapter, 64 in number. Raga Dvesha Vyukteha Tu Visayan Indre Charan Atma Vashe Videyatma Prasadam Adi Gachati But one who controls the mind and is free from likes and dislikes, Raga and Dvesha, even while using the objects of the senses, attains the grace of God. Same chapter number 2, Sloka 66. Nasti buddhihi ayuktasya, nacha ayuktasya bhavana, nacha abhavayataha santi asantasya kutah sukham. There is no wisdom for a man without harmony, and without harmony there is no contemplation. Without contemplation, there cannot be peace. How can there be happiness for one lacking peace of mind? Chapter number 3, verse 35. Shreyan Swadharmaha Vigunaha Pardharmat Su Anistitat Swadharme Nidanam Shreya Pardharma Vayavaha Better is one's own duty, though devoid of merit, than the duty of another well discharged. Better is death and one's own duty, the duty of another is fraught with fear. In short, Babuji would have said, mind your own business. Chapter 3, verse number 4. Na karvaram. Anarambhat nes karmyam purusha asnute nacha sanyasanat eva siddhim sam adhikachati. Not by refraining from action does man secures freedom from action. Let me repeat. Not by refraining from action does a man secures freedom from action. Nor does he secure ultimate perfection by mere renunciation that he may secure. Well, those are the seven gems. Later on, towards the end of the day of the first day of the war, cajoling Arjun Lord reveals three more Secrets, personal secrets to Arjun. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyut thanama dharmasya tadatmanam sujamyam. That is from Adhyay 4, verse number 7. The next sloka also. Paritranai sadhanam vinasayacha. Tuskritam Dharma Sansthapanarthaya Sambhavami Yuge Yuge And very important one, chapter 18, verse number 66. Sarva Dharman Paritrecha Maam Ekam Saranam Raja Aham Tva Sarva Papibhya Moksai Shyami Masucha so, all the best, my dear friends, and celebrate this Janmashtami with gusto, with joy, with fervor. See if you, some of you can fast also. Contemplate on the meaning of these verses. And as I said, these were verbally communicated from Lord Krishna to Arjun. That really does not mean that Non-verbal communication, which was heart to heart, is of any less importance. The entire Gita is relevant today, more than ever. 
in our lifetime and it shall continue to sound and resound for future generations to benefit it from thank you and pass on the tradition